Well, I'm going to propose a question to you. Is Oprah Winfrey going to run for president in 2020? I say very strong possibility. Um, you know, I just, I just ran, I was thinking this before, and it's not because anybody told me this. Um, now, I know there's been some predictive programming on Donald Trump running and winning president. It was in the Simpsons cartoon or something, which I never watch that garbage. But I saw something on YouTube where they put it together or some, maybe it wasn't on YouTube, but it was some pictures of screenshots of the Simpsons show where they had Donald Trump winning president. Um, now, with the case of who he's running against, Hillary Clinton, even though she had a lot of cheating on her side, I know they're telling you right now it's the freaking Russians that are cheating on the side of freaking Donald Trump. I'm like, yeah, really? Um, if she, I, I know, a thinking person wouldn't vote for the, her anyway just due to the issues she supports or whatever. But she's an old, she's an ugly old hag that hates people. I mean, that really freaking made her lose right there too. I mean, besides her, what's really beneath the surface. If she looked better, she might have won. Um, I'm thinking, and I'm pretty strong. I have a pretty strong opinion on this, but I don't really know for sure what the future is. But you know, I did it. I did a Google search real quick. I just said Oprah Winfrey 2020 or president, or whatever it was, or election 2020. And I'm coming up with all these Google titles about them floating the idea that she'd run. And I think she would win over against Donald Trump. That says you a lot about the nation. But I'm going to tell you some more about what's coming up. And it ain't good. This broad, I never watched her show once, I don't think. I think I watched some clips of it, maybe. On something, I don't. I, I'm not even familiar. With, I don't watch any stupid television. I don't watch David Letterman or whatever the one that jerk was around. I didn't even watch Jay Leno. I used to watch Carson back when he was around. Sometimes, that was about it. I don't watch any TV. Um, but this broad probably would win. There's no doubt about it. Um, and you know, I could say she's better than it. <laughs> she's not a tranny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we had, God, man, I should throw that in. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, you know, I've been getting, uh, I've been researching this guy. It's a kind of unrelated to this video, this Dr. Sabi guy. This guy, man, he's a good guy, man. I'll tell you that right now. I want to put that in here in the beginning because I'm going to say some things against a, a famous black leader that, because I know when, if they put up Oprah Winfrey, she, man, she's been playing that race card for freaking ages. And I don't know what the deal is with her, the angle, the angles. But it's uh, it, there's a game always going on behind the scenes where, yeah, she's got billions of dollars or a billion dollars, but nobody else does, you know, of the people she supposedly represents. This guy's legit. So if you're pissed off at me for freaking knocking Oprah Winfrey or Obama, and I'm going to knock Martin Luther King now here coming up. Just the guy, he's the good guy right here, Dr. Sabi. Him, I like. Um, he says he's a very wise man without education. Doesn't play like he's a preacher or nothing. So, you know, if you want to go look him up on YouTube, I've been watching some of his videos. He's a good guy. But, um, you know, a lot of the policies that have been going on in this country have been moving us step by step towards flat out totalitarian communism, there's no doubt about it. Martin Luther King, if he wasn't a communist, he was, he had a lot of communist ties. And I know he said some things against communism, but, you know, people say a lot of things. I mean, he's, but I'll tell you some things what he said, what he wanted is freaking communist 101. And I'll tell you why they really got rid of this guy. I ain't going very long with the gun, lone gunman theory. Um, King, con yeah, this is some freaking things. King concluded racism wasn't the only problem. War and poverty were the other problems. Yeah, we know that. Now I'm going to tell I'm going to tell you back, harken back to the message of Fatima, um, 1917, uh, when Mary appeared to the three kids. She said that war and economic depressions and you know the strife of mankind is due to sins of mankind. And, you know, you ain't going to fix that with the government spending money, for one. 
And that's why you ought to go look back at Dr. Sebi, because that guy's, that guy's actually the real deal. Um, not Martin Luther King. Uh, so Martin Luther King came out against the Vietnam War. That's a plus, okay? And JFK was against the Vietnam War, but of course LBJ, London Baines Johnson, changed that policy immediately thereafter. Now Martin Luther King also called for the nationalization of some industries and a guaranteed annual wage. That's communism all the way, baby. There's no doubt about it. Now some people think, oh, that's good. Problem is, ruins the incentive to work. It sounds good, but it ruins the incentive to work. Period. His most audacious, and this is why he was killed, man. I can tell you that right now. I know, I'm not buying a freaking lone gunman theory, but I want to get into some other things here. Uh, his most audacious plan was a forerunner of today's Occupy movement, you know, Occupy Wall Street. In 1968, the year he was killed, he was planning on doing, preparing a poor people's campaign to Washington. A coalition of poor blacks, Native Americans, Latinos, and whites from Appalachia. Which, I might be a white from Appalachia pretty soon, you know. <laughs> but I wouldn't go march on D.C. I wouldn't go in that place. It would occupy Washington and force the government to take money spent on Vietnam and instead spend it to combat poverty. Dodo, you are, this guy's, you know, first off, the whole Vietnam, the, the ruse for the Vietnam War was to fight communism. So here you got a guy that has, went to communist training school, you know, right here, here and all this kind of crap. You know, he says these communist things like nationalized industries and guaranteed annual wages. Um, he, ain't, he ain't what he's cracked up to be. No, no way from, no way from hell. He doesn't represent what America's about. He doesn't represent what black people are about either. Dr. CB does. <laughs> He's freaking that guy who was cool. But, and then he goes, um, it didn't cost the nation a penny to open up lunch contact counters. It didn't cost the nation a penny to give us the right to vote. <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, but it will cost the nation billions to feed and house all its citizens. The country needs a radical redistribution of wealth. He's a communist. There's no doubt about it. Now I'm not rec I'm not ignoring the fact that there's loads of racism in the United States. Or, well, I I could actually tell you go back to see Dr. Sebi. Races are different. There's no doubt about it. Not that one's better than the other, but everybody's different. Everybody's got different strengths and blah 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 and all that kind of crap and wah la 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 la. Um, but you know Martin Luther King was the guy that he um. You know, if he was running for president, he would be president, too. He was another one. He would be president, no problem. But, you know, he... And, and I don't care that he plagiarized his uh, doctorate thesis. I don't give a damn. He uh screwing around women. But then again, don't go playing like, you know, you're some minister while you're screwing around with everybody. <laughs> you know, I don't give a damn about screwing around with women. But don't play like you're a minister. Now, i got to tell you this. A lot of the operations that are going on in this nation, it doesn't matter if it's the 60s civil rights movement, which happened to go, happened to come out mainly when um, the centennial several celebrations of the war between the states were coming about. Remember, I put, I put out that video before. In 1957, the Congress passed um, some kind of act or law or something. I don't know if it was a law, but... It, issued uh, whatever some kind of proclamation whereby to encourage the southern states to uh, put up a lot of uh, displays of their confederate um, you know confederate battles and what they did back in 1861, 62, 63, and 64, and 65 for the centennial from for 1961 to 1965 which happened to go along right with the civil rights movement and of course you had people in the major media flashing confederate flags and battle flags and stuff back and forth between Martin Luther King marches and showing like these are opposite ends here and, and of course people in the south didn't like Martin Luther King due to his communist message no doubt about it so 
I'm going to tell you, I think this was a big Tavistock operation. And we're still under the UK. Actually, the UK tried to get us back in 1812. They failed. But I think the Crown has gotten us back with the war between the states. The Confederacy was about restoring the Republic. That's that's why I'm hot on that flag. So you got Tavistock, you got the Frankfurt School, the Club of Rome, the World Bank, you know, the Bilderbergers, all under that. And of course they run Godlike Productions, which is a bunch of bull crap too. Now, if you want to really talk about laissez faire capitalism, <laughs> it's it involves work, unfortunately. And the one thing that gives you the energy to work and the intellect and to be all you could be, as they say in the army or something, which I've never was in, I was a jarhead, <laughs> um, is through nutrition. So refer back to Dr. Sabi, okay? But this is our president, Calvin Coolidge. So I guess he was the president from 24 to 28, 1924, because it was Warren Hardin and it was Woodrow Wilson for eight years, and then uh, Warren Hardin and Calvin Coolidge, then uh, Hoover, then um, Roosevelt. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. So all growth depends upon activity. There is no development physically or intellectually without effort. And effort means work. <laughs> there you go. There's the answer to the freaking economic problems. Right there. You know? But you know, not everything not everybody is adept at well, you know the thing is you can make a lot of money being a car mechanic too. I can tell you that right now. I mean I mean, I work in a um, CPA firm, not off and on, you know. I've been associated with it for 10 years. And I know a lot about cars. I know I could probably make <laughs> quite a bit of money about working as a car mechanic, too. But I wouldn't be, you know, you know, floating around in society as a little higher up, as they call it, because you work in a CPA firm. You know the deal, right? Like if you're a doctor, you all of a sudden got prestige. If you're an attorney, you got prestige. You're a CPA, you got prestige. I'm not a CPA, I'm an accountant, but um, actually I'm more of a MacGyver. <laughs> I think MacGyver, MacGyver counts for more than anything. But yeah, this this guy, this is really here's here's the president, and you know the historians hate Warren Harding and uh, Calvin Coolidge. They call them a do nothing presidents. Well, you know what they were doing? They were scaling back the government and allowing the private sector to, to thrive. That's what they were doing. You know, Martin Luther King's method would never work in a million years. We, we can be having revolutions like in a banana republic. Now, I'm going to say something about this deal because I know this happened real recently in 2015. Um, this Dylan Roof, remember Dylan Roof from uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Charles didn't wear, you know, South Carolina being the first to secede. So 100 years, 50 years after the war between the states is over, you got Dylan Roof with his Confederate flag and all this South, and apartheid and all this other crap. Goes into a church in South Carolina and kills nine black church members, including Senator Clem Pinckney. Pinckney. Um, I'm a little suspicious that this was a Tavistock operation. Maybe, maybe not. This is this guy from the UK, Dylan Roth. <laughs> Swear to God, he looks like Dylan Roof. It wouldn't be such a big deal if the name wasn't so close, but the, the facial features, if you put this guy's face on in a facial recognition software, you're going to find a match, man, a high probability match with Dylan Roof. Um, this is Dylan Roof's father, which I don't know... You know, nobody said they ever knew the entire background, but I think they could have paid off this guy. They could have paid off certain church members because when I saw the church members after the shooting, some of them were, like, totally stoic, like it was like somebody got killed on the other side of the planet that they didn't know instead of an immediate family member. I don't give a damn how freaking you are with, with the Lord and how forgiving you are. You wouldn't be acting like that few days after your immediate family was killed by this guy in cold blood I wouldn't be doing that no way in hell so it could have been I'm not 100% sure I actually went on to other videos about um, the flagpole looks like it was 
<laughs> guaranteed, I actually tell you, was photoshopped in couple, two of the pictures anyway with Dylan Roof, and those pictures are released by the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is operated by George Soros, right? Or mainly is funded by George Soros. Now, I do think one of the targets, though, of that operation was this senator from South Carolina. And why do I say they, they targeted this senator? Because I want to tell you honestly, police are like a mixed bag. There's good cops and bad cops. Trouble is, the bad cops get away with a lot of shit for like umpteen years before they get caught, if they ever get caught. And you know, the other reason why they get away with it is because the other cops don't rat on on the bad cops. Mm -hmm. Well, Clem Pick Pickening, you know, the senator from South Carolina who was killed in the church, was a strong advocate of putting body cams on all the police. And you know what that would do? That would end... Because, you know, law enforcement isn't necessarily corrupt by itself. Law enforcement is corrupt due to um, above them. Like, yeah, like, I mean, yeah, there could be a bad cop. But generally speaking, more of the corruption in law enforcement is due, like, in other words, when they say to protect and serve, that doesn't mean you the people. That means <laughs> that means the guys that uh, they work for, you know, the district attorney, the prosecutor, the the county commissioners and the political machine. That's who they protect and serve, man. Or, you know, it's an advertising, Madison Ave Avenue advertising thing. So Clem Pickney having, um, asking to have um, the body cams on the cops, they wanted this guy out of the way. Now, I, don't consider, I consider this guy, Clem, light years ahead of freaking Martin Luther King. I don't really like Martin Luther King for a number of reasons, which I, I'll go, I can tell you again, man. This guy was, uh, you know, guarantee a national annual wage. <laughs> yeah, it sounds nice. So, I could, nobody, so you could sit on your ass and you got a guaranteed national wage and go freaking work three hours out of the eight hours you're paid. Well, you can go work for the Florida Department of Health or something. That might be a deal right there, right? Guar that's a guaranteed wage. Um, called for the nationalization of some industries in the United States. <laughs> Freaking God. <laughs> I don't like that shit. I mean, that's bad news, man. And, you know, maybe I'm going to be in Operation White within the next couple of years, and maybe I won't have a lot of money. I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. And if I was a poor Appalachian White, I wouldn't be marching on D.C., but he was preparing to lead a poor people's campaign to force the government to take the money spent on Vietnam and use it instead to combat poverty. Well, in Vietnam, they could have got that... The American military was kicking ass in Vietnam, left and right, even with one hand tied behind their back. But the whole war was designed to just enrich um, people behind the scenes because um, the North Vietnamese military machine was inadvertently fed from even the Soviets, who we opened up some trade to, that they helped China, and then China in turn helped the North Vietnamese um, military machine. Um, that's a long subject, but actually, we didn't lose the war in Vietnam. By any means, we left, and the other deal is the media likes to say we lost the military war in Vietnam because that's one up for communism because the major media is pro-communist. That is why they're pro Martin Luther King. Communism is an evil, man. Now, monopolistic capitalism is an evil. Monopolistic capitalism is just like communism in many ways. That's why monopolistic capitalists created communism in the first place. But this guy, man, I don't, I don't like this king. Serbia, I like Sabi, Sabi, I Serbi, Sabi. Uh, Oprah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> God. Well, we'll probably be in World War Three, getting ready for it if she ever gets to be president. So you're not gonna have to worry about it too long if she she makes it in office. That's gonna be the end of the United States. Um, they're gonna crucify the shit out of Trump, and then then you know. You're going to put this broad in, probably. They might. They might. They might. So, I'm actually telling you some disassociated things that actually bring together a mosaic. And I just want to tell you, you want to, you should listen to this Dr. Sabi guy, because this is a very wise man. 
I didn't. I wish I knew about this guy before, man. But I, I realized he, you know, I was listening to an interview by his um, best friend for like his best friend for 50 years or something, and um, he, Doctor Sebi, was in jail for a, a term of 60 days, and he, he only had a few days left when he died of pneumonia, and his best friend saw him a few days before he actually died. And uh, he says he looked like he was pretty strong. He had a little bit of a cough, and all of a sudden he died of pneumonia. I'm thinking, I don't know. That think it killed him, man, on purpose, to tell you the truth. They killed Jack Ruby. Remember the guy that killed uh, Lee Harvey Oswald? They shot him, they, so that, you know, and then Lee Harvey Oswald was the patsy for killing uh, JFK. Jack Ruby was injected with a cancer virus and given a 30-minute x-ray. They could have done something. I, I'm sure they did something to Dr. Sabi. 60 days, and then he was he was seen like fairly good shape a few days before he died. We only had a few more days to go. He would have been out or something. And plus, they set him up. But you're not going to hear about this guy. See, the major media doesn't like Sabi. That's why you know he's legit. If the major media loves the crap out of somebody, like Martin Luther King, you know he's not legit. And I could see why the Southern Confederate types, even though they were celebrating their one in 150 years of the war between the states, didn't like this guy because he had a lot of freaking communist policies. But you know, they're going to play the white on black um, Tavistock mind control bullshit to the left, you know. I mean, all the way, all the way to the hill, right? That's the game. To make it look like it's a racial issue when it's actually other things going on. And if you criticize somebody like Martin Luther King, that's why I'm like, you know, even these guys like uh, Ben Jones who played Cooter on um, the Dukes of Hazard and used to be the congressman from uh, uh, Georgia, you know, not Hazard County, that's a fictitious county. He calls it cultural cleansing and stuff, and he used to march with Martin Luther King. To tell you the truth, I wouldn't have marched with Martin Luther King. I probably, if I would march with anybody, I probably would have marched with the Black Panthers. <laughs> the old school Black Panthers, not the new ones. Um, the old school Black Panthers, I think, were pretty cool. They're, you know, for the most part, they were pretty good. And um, you know, I got my I got my own unique opinions on things, and sometimes people think they don't go together. But I got to tell you something else too. You know, the federal government right now is trying to make, and all these governments across the land is trying to make, you know, the Confederacy, all Confederate statues of war leaders, Confederate flags that were put back up during the 150 year centennial of the war between the states, you know, as evil symbols of racism and evil and all this crap. Well, the Confederacy really fought for limited government, uh, a weak central government, and apportionment of taxes collected to go to the areas where they were collected from, not that you take all the money from South Carolina and you give it to New York, New York State or something to benefit the industrialists, which is, why, which is really why the South Carolina seceded. Now, of all the freaking people that this is the Justice Department, the FBI in Washington, D.C., and this is a Confederate general that has a statue of himself in front of the Justice Department. Now, you would think it would, if they're going to just, you got a real Justice Department, it would be General Robert E. Lee, who was anti slavery, pro, pro Union, and went into the Confederacy due to the fact that the Union um, attacked his home state per orders of Abe Lincoln without authorization of Congress. So he went to defend his home, homeland. He, Robert E. Lee was actually anti-slavery. And actually, if you look at the Constitution of the Confederacy, it's um, it's got stuff in here like you can't import slaves from other countries and stuff. Like they were, they were going to get rid of it eventually. It looked like that it was the deal. Um, but here we have Albert Pike. Uh, 33 degree Mason. Um, he was in the Confederacy. Now this guy I got no respect for. He's the guy that predicted the three world wars. The third world war we're not up to yet. 
I think we're getting close, though. We're getting closer, man. Remember the message of Fatima, 1917. 100 year anniversary is 2017. Uh, probably the beginning of maybe we could, might be the start of some economic problems in the stock markets or something this year. And you'll see that, mm -mm -mm -mm, you know, other problems will crop up and it'll lead to, you know, conflicts. And of course, maybe there's a planned conflict, but then again, you never know, plans go awry. Well, according to the message of Fatima, Nations are going to disappear, and I think this nation is going to be one of them. Because the whole reason for the wars and, you know, the poverty and depressions is you don't obey the laws of God. And you can tell you right now the major media is not obeying the laws of God for crap, okay? <laughs> and I'm not real religious, okay? I'm not giving a damn about, you know, if you like all the ladies and stuff, whatever, fine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even, I don't even fault Martin Luther King for screwing around with women, but the fact he was playing minister and screwing around with women kind of bugs me. I don't like that crap. It means phoning. But this Albert Pike guy was 100% rabidly pro slavery and used to kill people that were anti slavery, that were whites. This guy is the only statue of any Confederate officer that's in Washington, D.C., and he's located right across from the judiciary in Washington, D.C., the FBI and all that crap. So what does that tell you? That tells you a lot, doesn't it? Because they tell you they're not racist, but they are racist. Now, um, Dr. C.B., <laughs> I like this guy, man. He says the races are different. He's correct. We are somewhat different. Um, it's not like we're different, different. But, you know, it's a little more different than just skin pigmentation. There's still differences in strengths and weaknesses in his races. Like, um, I could tell you, I think the Orientals are smarter than the Caucasians on, you know, technology and things like that, for the most part. And, um, you know, Dr. Sabi says, now this is one reason I like this guy, because I've been into health a lot for a number of years, that healing is really going to be uh, the area of Africa and African medicine, which helps everybody, you know. Just like Japanese build electronic stuff, and they got all these cool cars and whatever the hell it is in electronics, and the Chinese do that too. I mean, you know, whatever. They're both... I know they're enemies, but they're of the Oriental races. Well, that helps all the humanity. You know, Africa. This is. I'm going to tell you something else on this deal too. I got to diverge a little more. Um, this guy, he cu he cured like all diseases, including including AIDS, HIV. Right now, I should drop a dime here again. Give you a little more. If you really want to know what the policies of the elite are. Look at what the CIA predicts for the next five or ten years and look back at their predictions. You know, when they predicted something maybe ten years ago, where we would be today. One of the predictions they said for Africa was that the population would be reduced. Now, most of their predictions were correct, but they weren't correct on Africa. And I know what the run, how they're trying to reduce the population on Africa. It is through... Um, HIV AIDS and Ebola and also these tin horn dictators that they're controlled by the West like in Nigeria and when you got Shell oil company in there and all that kind of crap there's a lot of games going on man and HIV was deliberately introduced into Africa it didn't come from the green monkey through a um, smallpox vaccination But I always kind of figured it wasn't taking hold over there, not to do to Dr. Sabi exactly, but I, I, until I, you know, because this was before I was aware of him. But due, due to sunlight and the natural green foods, I figured that was really slowing it down a lot. Um, well, 
I'm sure it has, you know, people that have never seen or heard of Dr. Sebi, they would realize that, you know, just some of, them, some of the natural green foods. But not all Africans do eat the natural green foods, as he points out. A lot of that stuff came from, uh, you know, the Caucasian or whatever, or the Chinese or some shit. And, you know, maybe not inadvertently, deliberately placed in Africa as a um, tool to wipe out the population like they did with the vaccinations. Because, you know, the white people and the Chinese eat starches and shit. But, you know, it was there to, uh, it's it's uh, actually helping disease to come, you know, go along, you know. Um, this broad is basically Oprah. She's nothing more than a phony hologram, basically. That's all she is, man. And she more than likely in 2020 if she's put up as president and I really, I was now, I was just thinking this I was thinking wonder what who the hell would they since they put up a, a businessman entertainer that never had any political experience who would be the one that could knock out Trump in 2020 Oprah Oprah <laughs> so she's bad news man she's bad news she's bad news to, from all hell now, I want to go through one more thing, because I know a lot of people think the Confederate flag is a big racist symbol, and they're pointing at this um, Thompson guy that, um, you know, supposedly designed the first, or third, or second, excuse me, the second national Confederate flag, which had a mainly white background, and I got this off of Take Back Our History, man. You know, as usual, you know, this guy, this one guy from New York, um, Syracuse University, is claiming that um, Thompson designed the Confederate flag, but the facts of the matter are that if you look back um, in some of the, the raw information all the way back, that um, Thompson was not even a part of the committee which designed the flags and the seal of the House or in the Senate of the Confederacy and wasn't even in the city at the making of those decisions and had to receive news of the approved flags via dispatch. But he did write that the flag was a symbol of the white man's struggle for supremacy over the black man. That's what Thompson wrote. But Thompson at this time was not a combatant. He was not a person in the government. He wasn't even a, he did design a flag, but he designed a flag with a white background and a blue cross, and that was not accepted. <laughs> but you know, here you take one guy's opinion, because I could take one guy's opinion out of any group there is, and you know, and then assign that to the other to everybody else in the group, which is typically what they do in the major media, right? You know, if they find one guy at a Confederate Confederate flag rally or something or a Confederate memorial heritage thing or whatever, saying one thing out of line, the media will blow that all out of proportion everywhere they possibly can. But in a lot of cases, they blatantly lie, just like this professor at Syracuse University blatantly lied. And um, even Wikipedia has picked up a modification of some of this. Of course, Wikipedia is a bunch of garbage, too, a lot of times. But uh, I can see what's coming up down the pike. and um, But I ain't worried about it. <laughs> the reason I look at it like this, nations are going to disappear, as Mary said, at the message of Fatima. And this nation is going to disappear. And this broad, if she's sitting in the White House, she's going to be at target ground zero. And they're not going to put her down in a freaking uh, underground shelter, so I don't give a damn. Um, you know, it, it's like everybody is playing a game. This guy, Sabi, was legit. He, I, he, I don't see where he's playing a game at all, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this guy is cool. I like this guy. But, I, you know, Martin Luther King was playing a game. I don't think he gave a damn about anything, to tell you the truth. I mean, yeah, he was, you know... It's like you get caught up in the shit, you get caught up in the shit. But I think there was a lot of blacks that were out there fighting for civil rights that weren't playing the game. 
trouble is whenever you have the major media push somebody ahead and make them look like a saint you know he's false prophet they ain't gonna say a damn word about Sabi because the FDA would go broke and all the big companies would go broke would sell pharmaceuticals in a 1.5 trillion dollar pharmaceutical industry on this earth and also these herbs would also lead to uh, a lot better interactions between people because everybody would be having a lot better positive attitude because you can't heal the mind and the spirit if you want to call it that without healing the body and the only way you heal the body is with nature Martin Luther King just wanted to just redistribute the wealth <laughs> They ain't gonna work, dude. They ain't gonna work, because oh, he was a, he was an instrument of the Tavistock Institute. Because you don't redistribute wealth, because wealth really comes from effort. <laughs> effort means work. Growth, wealth, productivity depends upon activity. Calvin Coolidge was a really great president, man. I tell you the truth, uh, this guy. I wish we had some more presidents like this, but we don't. We don't. And I think we're in the beginning of the end of the United States of America, but we got a few more years to go. And I'll probably be up there in Appalachian when the shit comes down. Flying my Confederate flag. And I'm not going to be doing nothing against no black people unless they try to kill my ass or some shit because they, I'm flying a Confederate flag. But, you know, but, but hear me out. I don't mean what you, you might think it is. This guy, Clem Pickney, he was he was legit. He's a real good guy. I think he was the target of a this Dylan Roof. I don't think he was like because you know what I could take you could take the most rabidly racist KKK member. They wouldn't be going into church and doing what that Dylan Roof did because if they were going to do that, they would have done that a long time ago. Um. You know, it's almost like a, a made-to-order event. Not that it's impossible. But, you know, there's, like there's several things, and I went over it on another video. It looks like a slam dunk on the airbrushed Confederate flag in the Dylan Roof's hands. And, you know, 150 years right after the uh, end of hostilities between the states, and which would have been... Um, not a centennial celebration, but a centennial and a half celebration. I don't trust it, man. But you know, I don't. I don't believe the Sandy, the Sandy uh, Hook, whatever the hell that is, up there in the school in the Connecticut shooting. I think that was his setup. I think Virginia Tech was his setup. I think uh, Columbine shooting was his setup. I think they all are. All the major ones. I think they were all setups. So don't go thinking I don't I I I'm thinking because I'm white, and I think this Dylan Roof couldn't do it because all white people wouldn't do that. Well, there are people that do shit like that, but uh, he's a little bit it's a little bit too textbook, like right out of the freaking what they would want to happen to uh, push a lot of the mind control bullshit. Because then they started making like the Confederacy is a racist white thing, and you know, the socialist guy or something is a bad guy or so, is a, is a good guy or something. Now Clem Pick Pickney wasn't a socialist, all right. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a real good guy. Um, and like I gotta repeat it again, the only the only Confederate general they really like. They really like in Washington D.C. He was the biggest freaking pro-slave racist going. Confederate generals weren't thinking about that shit. And you know, the Union, the Union, they hated the abolitionists. You know that? They hated the abolitionists. Most of them. But you gotta, you gotta listen to what the hell way I think because, you know. If I was on a jury, and I better not ever tell this to a judge because they'd fucking slam me in a second. And I saw, you know, they had this black guy up there on driving for a suspended driver's license. And he had a bucket of weed in his car or something in the trunk. And they caught him red-handed. 
and I was on a jury, and because you know, just because I think those rules are bullshit, I'd find them not guilty. But I'd do that for a white guy too. You know, I'd do that for anybody, because I think there's too many rules in this damn country, and the more they freaking slam people that are the working people as Calvin Coolidge was a pro-working guy and he, he was d dismantling the heavy taxation that was on his nation from World War I in returning us to an a age of normalcy. The more they slammed the average working guy, whether it's at the county level, the state level, or the federal level, the more they pull money out of where the real economy is and guess what that's actually felt exponentially you don't create wealth by just saying like Martin Luther King was saying here guaranteeing a freaking annual wage and nationalizing some industries and uh, just giving money to all the money people to the poor people and redistributing the wealth <laughs> well you know what if Martin Luther King even though he, sometimes he said he wasn't a communist and sometimes he said he wasn't he was against it and it was an evil his policies were freaking communist and LBJ uh, who was actually a really rotten individual who actually signed into the Great Society you know the Great Society was another angle where certain people were making a lot of money off of that shit LBJ pushed the Vietnam War partly because he made money off it personally too of course, they would say, it's to fight communism. Yeah, well, it would have been over in about freaking eight weeks if they actually allowed the Americans to do their job. There's a lot where the rules of engagement were told to the Vietnamese ahead of time. Yet, yeah, even despite that, we won the war militarily. People go, no, no, no. I say, yeah, we did. We did. We left. <laughs> and the goal of the elite was this. To make America look weak and shit, and like a piece of shit, so the goal of the elite was accomplished. Okay? Um, Martin Luther King was probably a Tavistock part of that game, too. Dr. Sebi is not. Clem Pickney is not. Now, as far as Oprah, she is definitely hooked in with the big bucks. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. This bride is a load of crap to the max. So, but more than likely, I don't know if this is a guarantee, but I think 2020, this yo-yo is going to be running for president. And I'm going to tell you something. I'll drop a little dime here. Back in 2013, I knew this back in the 1990s, though, about Bill Clinton's son, Danny Williams. Right? I knew about that in the early 90s. And I put out in 2013 about Danny, is Danny Williams the son of Bill Clinton? And I think I was the first one on YouTube to do that. And I know I probably swayed 100,000 votes away from Hillary just with that video. Because I said the guy didn't give, she, he didn't get a dime f from them, right? Really, he didn't get shit from them. And somebody was saying, well, you're just putting it out for the election. I says, no, nah, I didn't, because I put it out in 2013. Well, guess what? <laughs> I knew the bitch was going to run, even though nobody back then knew she was going to run. Now, I'm going to tell you, I am likely, man, it's a biggie, but if this Lord, the Lord uh, Greg Hallett is right, um, I would be related to <laughs> Danny Williams through King Edward the seventh, Because Bill Clinton was uh, the offspring of King Edward. If this Lord Nathan, uh, Lord, Lord um, Greg Hallett is correct. And the real father of King uh, Edward, actually my, my great-grandfather was born when King Edward was Duke, um, Duke Albert Edward. Okay, it was way back when, right around the Civil War time. And, uh, but in, in uh, Italy, you know. Or France, I'm not sure, but he was raised in Italy. Um, but, uh, you know, the real father of Edward was Lionel Nathan Rothschild. 
So I'm telling this Danny Williams, yo, yo, you better do your DNA test because I want to find out if you're some kind of distant cousin of mine because this is going to prove this whole freaking thing nine yards all the way. But, you know, he, he didn't do it yet. He didn't do it yet. I'm telling him, you better do it, yo, yo, because that'll prove not just Bill Clinton is your daddy, but your granddaddy was um, Edward, King Edward, and your great-granddaddy was Lionel Nathan Rothschild, and improve my link to that shit too, but uh, I'm not sure about this Greg Hallett's research about Churchill fathering Clinton. That's what it was, and I know Edward fathered Churchill. That's what it was. It wasn't Edward fathered Clinton. It was Edward fathered Churchill. That's a that's legit. I don't know if Churchill actually fathered Clinton, but as far as I know that my great-grandfather was the illegitimate son of Duke Albert Edward. I know that. I don't know if Duke Albert Edward's father was Lionel Nathan Rothschild, but, you know, this Lord Greg Hallett might be right, and from other things I know it might be a correct supposition. But I'm not in the loop, though, because uh, I'm like a confederate. <laughs> I don't like that shit. Anyway, Oprah, um... <laughs> she's probably going to run, and if she ran, she'd win. There's no doubt about it. If you think the race, the race was close with freaking Hillary, this broad at least got a personality. You know, at least she knows how to act in front of people. Hillary hates everybody. <laughs> Oprah would win. Not that I want her to win, but that's what's coming up. And I told you a mosaic of different things, and I had the balls to say it. Because I'm sick of being politically incorrect. You know, these cuck conservatives calling Martin Luther King a conservative. <laughs> what the hell? What do you call Joseph Stalin a conservative, too? Get the hell out of here, man. He ain't a conservative. I mean, what the hell's a conservative, anyway? But, you know, he, he was not, he's not, he's a socialist communist yo yo, man. He's rich, distributing wealth. I'm sure Oprah would be all for that shit, too. And it ain't going to work. We're going to get blown up by the freaking Russians and the Chinese, so don't worry about it. So I'll probably be up there in Appalachian by the time this broad gets elected. Anyway, over and out. And um, this video hopefully will be floating around here a few years from now. <laughs> and you'll find out if I was right. But there's a reason why, and I don't like getting involved with these people anymore, but there's a reason why I get involved with these scary, really rich people. Well, they're scary, man, to tell you the truth. And um, it's because I, I think like them. And I could usually tell what the freaking real deal is and see through the smoke screens. Anyway, over now.